निर्मला मैम कैन यू शेयर मी द यूट्यूब लिंक is shared i think live is now now live is coming uh, i think you can start the video please post the link for us nirmala uh, ma'am in the chat box so that uh, sir will share with me it's live now good to go start music uh, videos accept please all please all i am home I give you comfort. I shelter your family. See me for who I am. Home sweet home. I am your refuge. I am the floor that supports you. The foundation that keeps you steady. The walls that give you shelter. The roof that protects you. I am your home. If you don't take care of me, I cannot take care of you. Recording in pro I am I am the living the animal that runs next to you from your first step on this planet i am part of a complex and sublime ecosystem i belong to the earth the forests the oceans and the sky i am beautiful and mysterious i am both the predator and the prey often in motion nature is home to me i like my loneliness and i like being surrounded by my tribe i am so many things at the same time i am a bird singing and dancing with the clouds i'm a leopard faster than the wind i am a lion with a crown respected by all I am an elephant, a proud member of a herd. I am a tiger, alone, strong, smart and beautiful. I am a gorilla whose behavior is a mystery to you. I am a whale bigger than your imagination. I am a polar bear. My coat makes me invisible in the white desert. I am all species at the same time. I see, I listen, and I breathe. However, every day I disappear in silence. For your children, I become a memory. I am a voice you're not listening to, and very soon I'll only be a legend. I am the living. Feeling that presence. Feeling that grace.
Nirmala ma'am, make me co-host, please. You are the co-host. Thank you, ma'am, you can start. Are we starting now? Because we have seven more minutes. No, no, you can start. All, almost all people are logging. Okay. Hang on. Uh, shall we play one more time? Sure, no problem. One more song, please, uh, video. Arika. Awaken. Their canopies of green glitter in the sun. Their wildlife start to slither, chirp, and growl. And one of the planet's richest ecosystems comes to life. Green forests are the oldest living ecosystems on the planet. Some can trace their origins to over 70 million years ago, back to a time when dinosaurs still roamed the earth. While the giant reptiles have disappeared, rainforests continue to thrive, growing on every continent except Antarctica. Two types of rainforests are scattered across the globe, temperate and tropical. Temperate rainforests are mainly found in the mid-latitudes, often near cooler, coastal, mountainous regions. Tropical rainforests are primarily located in warmer climates, between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. As their names imply, temperate and tropical rainforests are the wettest forests on Earth, receiving up to about 33 feet of rain per year. This precipitation plays a critical role in creating an exceptionally lush and biologically diverse habitat. While rainforests only make up about 6% of the Earth's surface area, they are home to over half of the world's plant and animal species. This biodiversity creates benefits that extend far beyond the rainforest boundaries. Rainforest plants produce an assortment of food items, in addition to ingredients useful in everyday products and medicines. In fact, an estimated 70% of the plants used in cancer treatments are only found in rainforests. On an even larger scale, rainforests help to stabilize the planet's climate. Its lush green vegetation regulate global temperatures by absorbing massive amounts of radiation from the sun. They also absorb vast amounts of carbon dioxide and convert them into oxygen about 40% of the planet's breathable air. Over the past few centuries, rainforests have disappeared at an alarming rate. Factors such as economic inequalities, human development, and demand for natural resources have fueled the deforestation of these rich ecosystems. At the current rate, rainforests, which have survived for over 70 million years, may completely disappear within the next century. But through educational campaigns, sustainable logging practices, and cooperation with local communities, deforestation may begin to slow down, helping preserve rainforests for many generations to come. One touch of nature. All right, uh, Erica, can you play the PPT? Welcome, Welcome to, to Webinar Series number two. Hang on, just hang on.
Welcome to webinar series number two, Protect the Wildlife by Dr. Wong Siuti from Malaysia. He is the Papa Bear of Malaysia from Borneo Conservation Center. One Touch of Nature Makes the Whole World Skin by William Shakespeare. Wildlife can be conserved by developing protective areas such as national parks, wildlife sanctuaries to protect the animals in their natural habitat. The endangered and vulnerable species can be kept in captivity in such places such as zoos and bred to increase their population. An earth without wildlife is a life without beautiful things. Help the animals to thrive before they become extinct. Protection and conservation of forests and wildlife are essential to maintain the earth health. Forests are part and parcel of our environment. The goal of wildlife conservation is to ensure the survival of these species and to educate people on living sustainably with other species. The importance of wildlife can be categorized as ecological, economic and investigatory importance as well as conservation of biological diversities and et cetera. Animals have also been highly useful to us in providing food, clothing and source of income. Our life is almost impossible without the support of wildlife. Join hands with us, Suchana, for the planet saviors and save the wildlife to protect our Mother Earth. I'm Nirmala Devi Kandasamy, ESL educator from SK St. Patrick in East Malaysia. Um, I've been teaching for 22 years and I've been actively involved in sustainable development projects and I'm the core team member of Suchana project. And at the same time, I'm Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert and engaging local and global students uh, using digital tools to empower more students and more educators. Well, let me talk about Suchana. The Suchana project is specially designed for the planet saviors. It's based on project-based learning, PBL. It's essentially about students and their learning. Through PBL, young lives will take charge of their learning by researching current global warming issues, root causes to understand and implement their real thoughts and practices into action. This project creates global knowledge and awareness of climate crisis happening all over the world, where these young minds will help support and protect this planet from climate changes as per UN, United Nations 2050. Suchana means the guidance and all information in the Indian ancient language, which is Sanskrit. Suchana slogan follows the United of the United Nations, leave no one behind, and to ensure sustainability and resilience, international action must be coherent. It should support rather than hinder countries' capacity to enact and finance their development strategies and enable rather than block channels through which global wealth can be distributed. Our vision is the project focuses on the participants to transform them into researchers, recyclers, scientists, entrepreneurs, industrialists, and global thinkers, etc. The Suchana for the Planet Series is set to recognize project-based learning activities to showcase world, worldwide students learning beyond their in educational institutions. Our mission is the global participants who are all engaged in this project are in deep learning that is empowering and sustainable. Suchana's main mission is to develop the 21st century skills and their inner thoughts of students in research, creative, innovative analysis, writing, vocabulary, communication, technical, etc. These skills will be developed and polished during the, this project and to bring their inner creative thoughts and mainly to bring respect towards farming Mother Earth uh, with their real action project outputs. So, um, Erica, can you go to the second slide? You can go to the second slide, Erica. Okay, Suchana for the Planet Saviors is, these are our collaborators. 
International Cooperation Office, ICO, Department of Education, Philippines, and also IELTA, which is IELTA International English Language Teachers Association. These two are our main partners with other collaborators, but, uh, uh, educators, uh, NGOs. Our prestigious, third slide please. Our prestigious associate partners are these other partners associating with us and more to come. Next slide, please. I've already mentioned earlier, Suchana, the guidance and in, or, in, in, or information in the Indian ancient language, which means Suchana guides the planet saviors to think as a global thinker and citizen. Next slide, please. So we follow UN SDGs 2050 policy, leave no one behind. Next slide. Our slogan, there is no planet B. So we need to really take care of our planet. Our motto is eliminate the carbon footprint. Our mission and vision and mission, I've already explained just now. Uh, we are actually working on adaptation to climate change and carbon footprint issues, activities based upon the waste management, plastic biodiversity, climate action, carbon footprint, etc. Uh, with all these goals. So China Global Participants, we are collaborating with uh, participants from 40 countries, 232 institutions have registered 300 teams, 10 country associations and collaborations, top 10 teams, each category will be awarded as winners. We have the jury members as uh, from global, uh, from other countries. Next slide. Project core team. The first, our team members are Dr. Dari Idekanai from Philippines, Mrs. Nirmala Devi Kandasami from Malaysia, Ms. Ming Yao Xiong from Taiwan, Mrs. Laura Stensi from Romania. Next slide, please. Uh, we have Global Youth Ambassador. This is Faiswa Ali from Uganda. He's a young entrepreneur, global MUN speaker, global winner and outstanding diplomacy awardee 2022, Global Enterprise Fellow, UNEDI. Next slide. We have Indian Youth Ambassador, who is Ashima Jha from India. She's a young researcher in water management, Swachata Sati Fellowship Awardee of Government of India, Peace Ambassador and Extraordinary Change Maker Awardee, Global MUN Speaker and Visionary Leader. We have intern trainees who are very helpful for us in the project. First is John Patrick Vitrilla from the Philippines, Jorin Montor from Philippines, Erika Gwen E. Rubio from Philippines, Ashima Ja from India. Yes, now I'm going to introduce the brain behind this project. The project director is from India, who is not other than Dr. Kalyani Rao. She is IBDP CAS coordinator and IAYP trainer, country ambassador India of IELTA, country ambassador of India T4 Education, Global Facilitator, uh, Global Facilitator Climate Action Project 2020 to 2023, UN SDG Project Expert, UN Climate Reality Corp, Solid Waste Management Professional, Six Sigma Green Belt from USA. She's an expert in global SDG projects, beach cleanups, and ocean conferences, as well as global SDG speaker, inspirer, mentor, yoga trainer, Ricky Master, meditator, and singer. Next slide, please. Now, without further ado, I would like to welcome our honorable speaker, founder CEO, Dr. Honorary Wong Siu T, DJN, founder and CEO of Bonian Sunbeck Conservative Center from Malaysia. Dr. Wong Siu T is a Malaysian by nationality. He's a wildlife biologist and tropical forest ecologist. He did his bachelor, master's, doctorate degrees in wildlife biology at the University of Montana, USA and has an honorary doctorate from the University of Sunshine Coast in Australia. Dr. Wong is the founder and chief executive, executive, uh, executive officer of the Borneo Sunbeck Conservative Center in Sabah, Malaysia, founded in 2008. Dr. Wong has been recognized with numerous awards for his work on Sunbeck conservation and is a worldwide authority on this rare bear species. Um, we are so without further ado, I would like to welcome Papa Bear of Malaysia, who is Dr. Wong Siuti. Over to you, Dr. Wong.
Dr. Wong. Where is he? Uh, Nirmala, ma'am, please make Mr. Wong the co host. He just rejoined. Okay. Okay, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, sorry for the little hiccup. Yes, we can hear you, yeah, doctor. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me to be this program. Uh, all of the teachers, it was great to join this Uchana program. And uh, and today I'm going to spend another, the, the next 40 minutes to tell you more about the sun bear. Well, first of all, beside me is the picture of a sun bear, which is the smallest bear in the world. And uh, later you'll see a bear's up close and personal. I'm gonna talk more about it. But some, one thing that's very special about the sun bears is that all of them are black color. All of them have a chest patch, you know, on the chest patch, which is very unique and very special. And later when we have the bears right in front of us, I can uh, tell you more about the bears. And of course, you know, uh, right now I'm at the Buddhist Sabai Conservation Center and we have uh, 44 rescue sun bear at our center right now. And I'm going to show you from uh, places to places where we have this cyborg to tell you more about the stories about the sun bears. And next I'm right at the uh, map showing the distributions map of the sun bear. This is where sun bears are found. They are found across East Asia, ranging from Eastern tip of India, Eastern tip of Bangladesh, Myanmar, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, Peninsula of Malaysia, Sumatra, and Borneo. The red area is the extinct zone. Bears used to be there, but no longer there because of deforestation, because of hunting and poaching. And then orange is the one that we know for sure there are bears. Yellow is the area where the forest is still there, but there's no study. Uh, all in all, sun bears is an endangered species. The numbers are very low. Uh, we, although we do not have uh, uh, estimations of how low are low, and um, uh, but one thing for sure is that their numbers is much lower than the orangutan. The only place where they have uh, estimations of sun bears number is in West Malaysia, stating that there's only three hundred to five hundred hundred sun bear left. And uh, right now I am at the uh, our observation platform over look at the entire rainforest and this is the forest where we keep our rescued bear oh there are two bears over here actually down here and later hopefully we can you see this tiny little black object those are the two rescue sun bear i think it's joe and uh, logan okay okay so a little quick tour all of our forests are really tall forest this is all trees giant trees it's about 50 meters tall and then uh and then i started this sun bear center back in 2008 in order to conserve sun bear through holistic approach that incorporates improved animal welfare education research rehabilitations ecotourism community conservations uh, we also do some anti-poaching work we also uh, uh, do uh, plan to do uh, captive breeding in the futures. Uh, all in all, anything that it takes for us to conserve the sun bear, we want to do them all. And then uh, the sun bear center is collaborate with the Sabah Wildlife Department, Sabah Forestry Department, and an NGO called Leap and myself as a wildlife biologist. Uh, set up the center in 2008, and then currently there are 44 sun bear rescue sun bears at our center and right now i am walking on this aerial walkway towards the second platform where i'm going to feed the bears and all the bears will come uh close so that we can see them up close and personal how's that okay i am yeah trying to walk very fast and then at the same time uh talking to you and then now uh, we have the bears already waiting. Okay, so ready to see some sun bears. Just bear with me. Okay, okay. Very much okay. Let me get myself organized a little bit over here. 
uh, you can uh, pin my video, my pin my uh, uh, screen so that it appears to be big on your screen so that you will have a better uh, viewing experience. Hello, you see me, I'm surrounding by surrounded by bears right now, sun bears, which is the smallest, among the smallest bear in the world, okay? So, among smallest, among the smallest bear in the world. And I'm going to feed them with a bunch of, this is their third feeding, consists of honeydew, consists of pumpkin, but I'm going to give them pumpkin first, okay? So, tell me about... Any questions so far? Can everybody still hear me okay? Okay. Yes, we can see oh. everything clearly, Doctor. Okay, good. So right now we have a bear standing up. So this is a typical sun bear looks like. They are black in color. They have really short ear. They got really short fur, and then they stand up just like human. They can be bipedal. You see how well he's uh, standing up with his two legs, holding the pumpkin with his hand, and yummy chewing just like that. And then all of them, uh, and you see, you see his chest patch, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the chest patch is like a warning sign. Whenever uh, he found something strange in the forest, he will stand up and then with the airs and then at the same time presented the chest pack. So immediately the presence of the sun bears being, uh, being noticed by the other parties. And then another thing about sun bears is that they are, have such a small ear, you know, they have such a small ear. And then live, living in, the, in this rainforest, we have a lot of rain. And for your information, we just have a pouring rain like uh, 10, 20 minutes, uh, 10 to 20 minutes ago. I was saying like, oh, we are going to have a pouring rain now, uh, which will make this uh, uh, virtual tour a challenge. But luckily, the rain stopped right now. But when, after the rain stopped, the forest is always very wet. And then, um, yeah. And, 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 and for, for the sun bear having a small ear, actually, there's a good advantage because the ear did not go into their ear canal. Yeah, so, yeah. And then sun bear is also known as, uh, they got many names. The Chinese call the sun bear dog bear, okay, because they, well, they are small, they bark like a dog as well, so they're called dog bear. And then uh, the local Malay words for the sun bears is beruang madu, or the honey bears. Uh, why they are called honey bears? Because they really love to eat honey. All right, so not only Winnie the Pooh loves to eat honey, the sun bear really loves to eat honey too. And this is Fulong. This is a uh, 11 years old male bear. And when he stand up, he is uh, about 1.2 meters tall. Uh, if you can see, come here Fulong, my boy, you stand up. Yeah, I raise Fulong up. So uh, yeah, come here, go closer. Yeah, so he is like, you know, 1.5 me meters tall. Um, yeah, and uh, so all of them have a really small uh tail, if you can see the tail, and um, yeah, all of them have really small tail and doesn't have any function. And then, uh, one thing for sure is that if you see, they got big claws, all of the sun, they have like huge claw, uh, huge claw, and then uh, their huge claw is. Is a good, it's an important tool for them to like find for rip apart decay wood, uh, rip apart uh, termite nest, rip apart uh, tree trunk in order to get hold of the honey. And one group of honey that they like to get in this forest uh, is this uh, stingless bee. Yeah, stingless bee build their hive inside the hollow tree trunk of a hardwood tree. And when a sun bear found the stingless uh, beehive, they would climb the tree and then use their really, really strong claws to help them climb the tree and use their very strong teeth to, uh, to chew the tree trunk. Yeah. 
Mm, yummy, yummy. It makes me very, very, uh, very hungry as well. Yeah. And then, uh, and as, as you can see, all of them have like really, really short fur. You know, there are eight different species of bears in the wild. And, uh, and, and there are two different subspecies of uh, sun bears. And just now I show you the map of sun bear distribution across Southeast Asia. Uh, on Asia mainland, together with uh, Sumatra, uh, the sun bears found there are what we known as Malayan sun bear. It's a Malayan subspecies. They are double the size of the Bonin subspecies. So if you go to Thailand, if you go to West Malaysia, if you go to Cambodia, and you see a sun bear in the zoos or in the rescue center, or in the wild, if you're really lucky, their bears is double the size from our bears. Yeah. Yeah, their bears is double the size from our bears. So they are very, very, uh, uh, yeah, different uh, in that sense, in the sense of size. Okay. So all of them have, uh, you see, they have like really, really small eyes and actually in when they live in this forest, the eyesight is not a very good tool for them to like find food and so on. They seriously and they strongly dependent on their sense of smell. And right now, Fulong standing up, trying to sniff the air and trying to see where's my food, where's my food. I want my honeydew. I don't want my uh, pumpkin. Yeah, because honeydew is a lot sweeter than the pumpkin. That's what they are. Uh, they are uh, prefer. Yes, it's their uh, preferred uh, food. Yeah. Okay, if there is uh, questions, uh, can the host uh, teacher, can you help me read out the questions? Because uh, I only use my handphone to do this. Okay. Yes, uh, we have questions. two questions, Dr. Wong. The first yes. question is uh, directly sent to me. The first question is, are sun bears vegetarian? The second question oh. is, how long is their lifespan? Okay, good. Let me answer the first question. Are sun bear vegetarian? The answer is no. They are omnivores, okay? In the forest, they feed on a wide variety of fruits. Yeah, and, and oh, somebody is pouring. They feed on a wide variety of fruits. And when fruits is available, then they feed, you know, they just scorch themselves yeah. with fruits. Fruits is the food items that they can fill up their body. However, when fruits is not available, then they will feed on a wide variety of invertebrates like termites, ants, beetles, beetle larvas, earthworms, centipedes, millipedes, uh, you name it. Anything that moves is bare food. And then uh, they also eat meat. However, they are not uh, good predators that can bring down a deer or pigs or a macaque and so on. But they do, but they do, uh, but they do, uh, yeah. Uh, but they do eat meat if they come across, uh, uh, say, for example, uh, 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 tortoises. They would, you know, eat the tortoise and then, uh, and then, and then eat the meat. Yeah. Okay. One question, other Dr. side Wong, of the bears. Will they uh, affect yes. people? Will uh, they okay, so affect have, people? Okay. So this is I have not answered the, the second question yet. <laughs> okay. 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 So. And then uh, the second question is, how long can they live for? So in the forest, come here, boy. Yeah, in the forest, if they can live for like 13, 12, 13, 14 years, that is considered as long. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So they cannot wait already. Oh, all right, all right. Okay, okay, okay. This is Joe. I need to feed them quick. Yeah. And Logan over there. So if they can live for like, 13, 14 years, that is considered as long. And then in captivity, the oldest bear that we know of, she lived for 37 years. And at our center, the oldest bear that we that, that lives at our center, uh, he lived for 29 years old, and he's still, he's still uh, strong, you know. And uh, that means that if the living condition is good, they can live a uh, long time they can live a long time yeah okay so uh third questions how um third question was just now um hang on yeah dr uh, dr wong uh do they attack people oh do they attack people okay so this yes. is a good question 
what do you think? <laughs> you know, being the smallest bear species in the world, being the smallest bear species in the world, in the forest, when they come across humans, they would run for their life because humans are a lot more scarier and dangerous than the bears to us. So the bears would not eat humans because they are the smallest bear species in the world. And then uh, only we eat them big time. We eat them big time. Okay, so they don't attack people. Yeah, and then uh, for those bears that live in the forest, every time when they sense human presence, they would run away quickly. For those bears that cannot run away from people, they will end up dead. Why? What kind of people in the forest? It is the hunters, it is the poachers. So we are a lot more uh, dangerous than them to us. So don't worry when you are in a sun bear country, don't worry to uh, encounter with the bears. If you encounter with the bears, if you see a bear, you'll be very, very lucky to be able to do so. However, if you are in North America, if you are in a, if you are in a grizzly bear country, then you have to be very, very careful because uh, those bears uh, can potentially eat a human. Uh, unfortunately, not the sun bear. So that's, that's, all, that's also why uh, I survived until now after spending so many years in the forest because the sun bear don't eat me. Yeah. That's great. Uh, okay. Thank you for the explanation, Papa Bear. Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, what do they eat? Mainly Dr. Wong. Uh, There's another okay. question. Do they eat fruits, honey? Yeah, yeah. So, so I mentioned earlier, they are omnivore. They eat a wide variety of fruit, and then in the forest. And then when the forest have fruits, they will eat the fruits. If the forest, if they cannot find fruits in the forest, they will feed on a wide variety of invertebrates. Yeah, this is Romolina. Oh, okay, okay. They will feed on a wide variety of invertebrates, um, like ants, termites, beetle, beetle larva. They also love to eat honey. You know, they, that's why they are called honey bears. Yeah. And then, uh, and then uh, they don't eat, they eat meat, but they are not a good predators. Yeah, they are not a good predators. Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. Dr. Wong, there's another question. The questions are pouring in. Another question is, um, how, um, okay, what are the main threats uh, faced by sun bears? Okay, so this is a very good question. Sun bears, uh, just like other wildlife in our forest, they are what we call as forest dependent species. You know, their presence, their existence, their survival all depend heavily on forest. The amount of forest, I mean, if forest is their habitat, is their home, and the amount of forest reflects on the amount of habitat that they have. So over the years, over the last 50, 60 years across Southeast Asia, our forests in here have experienced a vast deforestation. People lock the forest for timber. People lock the forest, clear the forest for plantations, for developments, for agricultures, and then uh, and and all of them, all of them have caused direct threats uh, to the sun bears. And then after logging come into this area, people moving in, and then uh, people start to like do hunting and poaching, and and hunting and poaching is the second. Uh, threats after 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 deforestation, and then uh, sometimes when poachers are in the forest, they come across a female sun bear with cubs, or they would kill the mother and then take the cubs as pets. Then pet skipping is the third threat for the sun bears. Imagine that the sun bears is the smallest bear species in the world, and the baby are really really cute. And because of their cuteness, people want to keep them as pets. And because people are sometimes people are stupid, they are so naive. They thought that ah, oh, as long as they can bottle fed a baby sun bear, the baby sun bear will turn into a chihuahua. Sorry, which is not going to happen because sun bears will still remain as a sun bear because they are wildlife. Their wildness will still retain. They are dangerous animals. You know, with these big claws and big teeth, uh, they will not make a good pet. Period. Yeah, so 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 yeah. At our center, all of our bears are are all have same uh, uh, faith, which is they are all often their mom has been brutally killed by poachers, and then uh, and then and then they are kept as illegal pets, you know. So we are 
orphanage for all of uh, the rescue sun bear uh, at our center. So far, there has been 66 sun bears uh, being rescued and sent to us. And then our sun bears, own, and yeah, so at the centers, we also do rehabilitation. So for those bears that can be released back into the wild, we are giving them a second chance to be able to live in the wild. Okay, so far we have been released uh, 11 bears back into the forest and then uh, more to come. And then for those bears that cannot be released back into the forest, uh, we, are, we are keeping them for the rest of their life. So in other words, our center also serves as, a, as, a, as a old folks' homes for all these rescued sun bears. Yeah. Another question Actually, is, uh, hmm. how many bears, sun bears are left at the moment, Dr. Wong? Okay, so the answer is we do not know. The only place where there is an official numbers of sun bears uh, being announced is West Malaysia, stating that there's only like 300 to 500 sun bears left is in entire West Malaysia. So 300 to 500 sun bears is, is, is not a lot at all. And then in Borneo, we don't know, you know the actual numbers but one thing for sure, they are much rarer than the orangutan. Orangutan is a critically endangered species. So for an animal that is more, that is rarer than the critical endangered species, then they are really, really endangered and really, really rare. This is Romolina. Romolina, you see, she has a smiley face chest patch. Yeah. Yeah, another question is that a uh, very interesting, important question that is, um, how can they adopt the sun bears? That's one of the questions yeah. we ask. Good. Well, I'm glad that you asked that. You know, anybody can adopt our sun bears by visiting our website at www.bsbcc.org.my. Again, I repeat, maybe a teacher can help me type it out is uh, www.bsbcc.org.my and then uh, on the website you can uh, click the bear adoption page and then uh, from there you can do our online adoption program. We have two different online uh, uh, adoption program. One is called My Bear where several people uh, collectively adopt a bear that costs you 300 ringgit a year or we have another program called My Bear Program, where one individual or one company or one organization exclusively adopt a sun bear all by themselves that cost them uh, 7,200 ringgit a year to adopt a bear. So you can choose the bears that you want to adopt from our website. And then, uh, so of course, you know, we want, because our center is open to the public and after this pandemic, our center is open to the public, the, the government, uh, the, 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 the country border has been open to the tourists. And uh, yeah, if you have the chance to come and visit us, please do come and visit us. Yeah. Another question is how fast they can run? Oh, how fast they can run? They can, obviously, they can run much faster than you and me and your friends uh, in the forest. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I, um, there's no study of how fast or how many seconds they can run 100 meters, uh, but definitely they can be run in the forest faster than you and me because we are not adapted to run or to walk in this forest, but they are. Yeah, they can run very, very quick. So don't challenge them. <laughs> and in the forest, if you get into trouble, if you're chased by a bear, uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> as long as you run faster than your, uh, than, than your friends, then you then you'll be safe. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, another interesting question is why uh their name uh, they are called sun bears. There should ah, be some okay, so, reasons. Yes. Okay. So so why they are called sun bear? Their scientific name for the sun bear is. Hila Actus Malayanus. Hila is sun, Actus is bear, so sun bear. Malayanus, why Malayanus is because some 200 years ago, the very first bear was being discovered in West Malaysia. That's why they're called Malayan sun bear, Malayan, Malayanus. And then why sun bear is because 
this particular bear that was found by a Western uh, a naturalist from UK, uh, Thomas Hirschfield, and then uh, he found he saw these bears basking under the sun in the hot tropical day. So that's why the name sun bear come into about. And then uh, another saying of these bears, of this bear, why they are called sun bears, is because is because uh is because their chest patch. If you notice their chest patch, every bear have a chest patch, right? And then some of the chest patch come into all different kind of shapes, including the shapes of a solar eclipse. Solar eclipse look like a sun, and then uh, Asiatic black bear is also known as moon bear because they are they are they are, they are their chest patch is always a crescent shaped chest patch, looks like a moon. So if there's a moon, there must be a sun. So that's why sun bear. And again, their scientific name is Hila Arctus. Hila is sun, Arctus is bear, Malayanus is Malaya. Yeah, that's why. Hmm, yummy, yummy, yummy. You see, this is Romolina uh, chewing his, uh, her, uh, her, her, her uh, pumpkin. One more question, Dr. Wong. Uh, in which country the sun bears population is small? Uh, in which country the sun bear population is small? Yes. All countries, the sun bear population is more, really small. You know, they are ranging again from eastern tip of India, eastern tip of Bangladesh, Myanmar, southern China, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam. Uh, 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 Peninsula of Malaysia, Sumatra, and Borneo, all of this area have very few sun bears. Sun bear used to be there, but many of them are no longer there. And then the surviving population is actually quite small as well. Yeah, we don't have the actual numbers to show how many are there, but small enough, small enough. Very good. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, yeah. So she's uh, relaxing. Hi. Obviously, you can see they can walk by paddly. They can walk uh, with a with a two feet. Yeah. And then uh, you see they are so cute, isn't it? Yeah. Their cuteness is actually causing bringing them a lot of troubles. Uh, people want to keep them as pets. That is a problem. Uh, but it's, it's it's not their fault. All right. It's not their fault. It's just humans. You know, and then of course, you know, just now mentioning about the threats, about deforestations, about hunting and poaching, about pet keeping, all caused by people. For me, when I study wildlife, I said, Oh, I don't want to talk to people, I don't want to deal with people, I want to I love animals, I want to work with uh, wild wild animals only. However, when I work with conservation, when I work with sunders, I need to deal with a lot of human issue and all of the problems that the sun bear face or the threats that the sun bear face are all caused by humans. So we are really, really bad. I think uh, we lost connection with Dr. Wong. He'll be coming shortly. He'll be joining us in a few seconds. All right, so, um, so I'm sure all of you have heard and most of your questions are answered. And I see a few more questions will be answered shortly uh, by Dr. Wong once he joins in. And I see a lot of questions as well on the YouTube. Uh, so shortly once uh, Dr. Wong uh, joins, so I will read questions from uh, the YouTube as well. All right, so from here we can see that the students are very excited to know about sun bears, the reason behind of its name, the food, the country, the population, the threats. So it's very interesting. So, Kalani, ma'am. So, can, what you do you think? A, you can play a okay, forest sorry, sorry. Yeah, he's back. Uh, I'll make you the co host, yeah. doctor. He's there. He's yeah. There. Uh, okay. So, sorry. I accident. Oh, I cannot on my cam. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. We can hear you, doctor. Okay, okay, sorry. I accidentally off the things by touching my uh, my ear port. My ear port has a has a function. If you touch it, you know, it means that it has been switched or something like that. Very, very annoying. Okay. Yeah. Okay, doctor. Yeah. We anyway, have another so, question. So, so. We yes. have another question. Uh, what are the animals or animal um uh, threats for sun bears? Or ah, are okay. they, uh, yeah, this is another yep. question. They are natural predators. Right? 
Okay, so animals that threaten the sun bear most, of course, number one is us, Homo sapien, human beings. And then, uh, yeah, so the, we are very, very, very bad. We are the biggest threat. We are the biggest predator for them. And then uh, in the wild, if we take humans out of the equation, for those bears that live side by side with the tiger, tigers are known to attack yeah, and eat uh, sun bears in the forest. And also other big cats like leopards can also uh, kill and eat sun bears. And then uh, here in Borneo, we don't have leopard or we don't have tigers, but we do have a documented case where a seven meters reticulated python kill and swallow a sun bear whole. Uh, so, so, so big bears, uh, big snakes can, uh, can kill and threaten uh, sun bears. Yes. And then uh, other than that, like crocodile of uh, that, but there's no documentation of a mm -hmm. crocodile taking a uh, swimming sun bear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dr. Wong. Uh, another question is from Dr. Asma. Um, is there any other conservative uh, center for conservation center for sun bears other than uh, in Borneo? Uh, we are the only one in the world who oh, do everything. So, mm. but we do have rescue center set up by governments or NGO uh, in Thailand, in uh, Indonesia, in uh, uh, Cambodia, in Laos, or in Sarawak to rescue, to house the rescued sun there. Uh, we are the only one in the world who do everything, you know, trying to conserve sun there through holistic approach. Mm -hmm. That incorporates improved animal welfare, education, research, rehabilitation, ecotourism, anti poaching, community conservation, uh, ecotourism, forest connectivity. Uh, because I am a very greedy person, uh, I know that in order to save sun bear from extinction, we need to do a lot of things, all of the above, and we cannot choose the easiest one thing to do and then left the difficult part not to do. Uh, it has to be. We have to tackle all the problems from all sides. And one of the biggest problems is actually people, you know, because people live side by side with the thunders. And then people are so powerful. And then, uh, and across our. We can't hear you, Dr. Wong. Dr. Wong, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Dr. Wong, I think uh, you need to turn on the microphone. We can't hear you. Hello. Yes. Now we can Hello? hear you. Yes. We can hear you now. Okay, so that's why that's why we for conservation work we actually at the end have to work with local people, especially the local people. We need to help the local people uh, improve their livelihood. And then uh, in the past, uh, before the pandemic, we have a solution. The, the solution is called ecotourism or nature-based tourism. Uh, but the pandemic kills this industry. And so right now, after uh, the, the pandemic situation is under control, uh, country's door is open, uh, traveling is start to ease up. Uh, right now, we are actually restarting the whole industry and hopefully we are not facing any more pandemics and hopefully the tourists come here, uh, the tourist money can help the bears, uh, can help conservation projects as well as the local people because when tourists come here, you know, everybody got a job. People can have a job as a driver, as a boatman, as a cook, as a tour guide, and all and all are extremely important to help the local community so that they have a livelihood, so that they can put food on the table, so that they know that the wildlife is a very important resources that they need to protect because it helps their livelihood. And then also, you know, the governments also will see that uh, the forest that's still spending worth money 
the wildlife that's still running wild was money. So, so, so tourism is extremely, extremely important, I think. Yeah. Yeah, one more question is, can they be trained to do tricks like other animals? Uh, please don't, because sun bear is still a wildlife. Uh, we train our bears not to do tricks, but to help management, say, for example, open their mouth in order for us to control us, in order to check their teeth. Uh, we train them to like present their hands so that we can, you know, draw blood uh, to do uh, checking and, and, and that kind of thing. We don't do, we don't train them to ride a bicycle or walk on a table or play uh, balls and stuff like that. We don't do that. And, uh, and we also do not want to do that. Yeah. So, yeah, they are not easy to train. I mean, why, why do we, this is a wildlife. Why do we want to train them to do tricks? You know, they are not an entertainment. But unfortunately, in Asia, uh, many animals are being treated as food. Many animals are being treated as entertainment. So, but we need to change this kind of a mindset. You know, we have to respect their existence. We have to respect their dignity. And also, we have to uh, respect their welfare and take care of their welfare as well. And in other words, we want we need to keep our wildlife wild in the forest have, and then and then keep minimum contact with them as much as we can. Okay, they are not meant for entertainment. All right, doctor. There's another question is uh, why sun bears are hunted? What 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 do they have so special? I think you have answered the question earlier actually. Uh, not quite. You know, I said they are hunted, but I do not say why. Okay, so okay. why they are hunted? Because people want to eat them as a large mammal. You know, here in Asia, we always joke about, you know, we eat everything with four legs except table and, and in chairs. We, we eat everything as long as their backbone is pointed towards the sky. We, need, we eat everything that can fly except aeroplanes, you know. So for a sun bear a, as a large mammal, of course, they got they got uh, meat, right? So people want to eat them, and then also they are considered as um, yeah, their 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 paws is considered as a delicacy, because some several thousand years ago they were being served uh, in in one of the emperor dish, okay, and that's why you know manhan chen yeah the emperor dish, and one of the one of the dish is xiong zhang is bear paws. And, um, and, and, and before the pandemic, unfortunately, in uh, Sabah, there are a, a small group of Chinese tourists come here to eat game meat, to eat wildlife, and sun bears is on the menu. They are willing to pay 2,000 ringgit for a bear tall stew. Yeah, so which is bad. And then uh, because of they are willing to pay that kind of money, and uh, there are some poor people who will take the risk to go and hunt the very last bears in the forest in order to make that kind of money. So it is really bad. And then on top of that, uh, sun bear's gallbladder has been widely has been used as a traditional Asian medicine for a long, long time. You know, this is not just a traditional Chinese medicine, but a traditional Asian medicine because all ethnic groups across Asia have used sun bears in some way. Uh, as their as the as a traditional medicine, and then also their claws, their canine, are believed to have to possess some supernatural power that can drive away evil spirits, uh, and and all because of that uh, they are being hunted, and you know either dead or alive will worth some money to some people. Hey, all right, Doctor Wong. Another question is, um, um, do they drink a lot and eat a lot? Uh, yes, they do eat a lot. You know, obviously, as a large mammal, they, then they need to have uh, quite a lot of food. And then at our center, we feed our bears with about 10% of their total body weight. So bears that weigh 40 kilograms, our rule of thumbs is we feed them with 4 kilograms of food each day. Yeah, and then uh, whether or not they drink a lot, you know, because they live in this uh, tropical rainforest, uh, it's, it's always wet, there's always rain, so, so it doesn't really matter in terms of uh, uh, source of water. However, during the drought day, during the days when they are very hot, and I'm sure they do a lot of panting, and then when they are panting, 
uh, they actually lost a lot of water uh, from their body, then therefore they need a lot of water to uh, to 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 replenish their thirst. Uh, yeah. So just like us, just like us, they are they are mammal, you know. Whatever their physiology is very similar to us, and uh, and they drink, they 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 drink, they they have to eat. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Dr. Wong. Is there's another question? Do they eat one kind of meat or any kinds of meat? Any kind of meat, any kind of meat that is available to them. They are not a good predators. They won't be able to hunt, hunt down a deer or pigs or a macaque. Uh, but if there's a carcass, you know, they would love to eat it. And then in the past, when I trap bears in the forest, uh, the bait that I use to trap bears is actually consists of chicken guts, chicken entrails, uh, chicken entrails, put it in a wire mesh basket. And then after the chicken guts live in this basket for several days in the trap, and it become juicy, creamy, uh, cheesy, and maggoty, and of course very smelly, and that's how the bears love it. So again, juicy, creamy, cheesy, maggoty, and smelly. That's how the bears love it. Uh, love their chicken guts. Yeah. Okay. I see another questions. Uh, hello. Okay, uh, are female and male sun bear different? Uh, okay, this is one question that I see. Uh, yes, the females and uh, uh, males are different. Uh, the male is a lot bigger than the female. The male sun, bonin sun, they weigh about uh, 45 kilograms and then uh, the female weigh about 35 kilograms. So females is, uh, is, is smaller than the male. And also the male is more muscular, their body is longer. And then of course the male, all the males got balls, all got testicles. That's how you can tell uh, right away. Okay, any other questions? Um, how many bears have you rescued, Dr. Wong? Okay, so how many bears have I rescued? Uh, the answer is uh, 66 bears that I rescued. Yeah, and uh, hold on. Yeah, 66 bears. And currently, we have a... Uh, we have a... Uh, hey, oh, okay, yeah. And then uh, currently, we have 44 bears at our center right now. Okay, you have 44 bears. Another question okay. is, what will happen if the bears are not protected? Do you think they will extinct forever? Absolutely, absolutely. They will extinct forever. And then uh, when, you know, the site, our center, the site where the bears is currently used right now is the site where the Sabah Wala Department is trying to breed the Sumatran rhino uh, 40 years ago. And then uh, after 40 years of trying, we still fail to breed any rhino. So rhino is officially extinct now in Malaysia. Entire country, we don't have any rhino. And then for sun bears, what we're seeing is that they started uh, disappearing from one region, how we call local extinction. And then, um, and then the local, more and more local extinction add up, become a regional extinction, followed by country extinction. And hopefully, uh, they won't suffer from species extinction. Uh, in many countries, like say, uh, Singapore have no more sun bears, where, where they used to have uh, sun bears in their forest. Yeah, they used to have uh, tigers in, the, in, the, in, in Singapore, but no longer there because humans occupy the entire landscape. So yes, it is possible that an endangered species can go extinct because of all the bad things that, that happens uh, to them. Yeah, that's why our center trying to, trying very, very best to prevent sun bears from becoming extinct. Uh, it will be very, very sad because uh, I did not mention about uh, the, the roles that they play in the forest ecosystems. Uh, yeah, how about I talk about, you know, why they are so, why do we need to uh, protect them from, from extinction? Because all sun bears, 
play many important ecological roles in the forest. They are, when they eat fruits, they ingest the seeds of the fruits, like just now when I feed the bears with pumpkin, they swallow the seeds. And the seeds will pass through their digestive tract and a few hours later come out in their pool, in their feces, and the seed will start to germinate after that. And then uh, from a lot of study, we know that the further away the seeds are being dispersed from the mother tree, the higher the chances of survival. And that process is called seed dispersal. So sunbear play very important roles as seed dispersal in the forest. So they plant trees in the forest. And second is that when they eat termites, some termite species like the microphytotermites are known to attack live trees. So when they feed on uh, this group of termite, also known as a forest pest, they control the termite population, preventing the termite from exploding and kill many trees at one time. So they are considered forest doctor, you know, to keep the forest ecosystem healthy. And then uh, when they feed on earthworm, they do a lot of digging, they plow the soil. And then it's just like forest, uh, it's just like farmer tilting the soil. And then uh, before, before, before uh, the planting, yeah. So they are forest farmers. And then they also play the roles as forest engineer because one group of ter one group of fruit that they eat is is honey, and honey one group of honey that they feed on is the stingless bee. Stingless bee build their hive, uh, in the hollow tree trunk, and the sun they climb up to the tree, use their very strong canine and claws to rip apart the tree trunk and dig a big hole and get hold of the honey and lead, eat the honey. And then that cavity is later be used by other birds like hornbills, like flying squirrels or other animals as their den, as their nest. So sun bear build, make dens, make nests for other uh, animals. So all in all, the presence of sun bears benefit both plants and animals in our forest. That's why they are so important. A forest with bears and the forest without bears will be a very different forest. Thank you so much, Dr. Wong, for this wonderful trip. Uh, you have any final words before we wrap up, Dr. Wong? Uh, yes, I do. So I always tell people to do what you do best to help us. As a teacher, I think what you all can do, or as a scholar, as a student, is what you know, the first thing that you need to do to save our wildlife standard included is to understand them. So to help us spread the word, educate the younger generations, about the importance of the sun bear so that they all, so that we all, they all can growing up knowing the importance of sun bears and other wildlife and our forest so that we can, you know, help protecting them from extinction, help protecting them from disappearing from our country, uh, from our, from our planet. And then uh, the second message I want to say is that, you know, feel free. Uh, to uh, to check out our social media, we have YouTube channel, we have our Instagram. I have my Instagram. Uh, we have our we have our uh, our, our, our website, our Facebook. Uh, do follow us. Do you know subscribe to our YouTube channel? Do go and check out our YouTube channel. Yeah, it's a web website to learn more about the sun bears. And then from there, you can also like say for example, adopt our bears. Yeah, help us adopt our bears. The money that you pay will help us keep our uh, bears healthy and also run our program, and then uh, and 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 everything else. Everything that we do over here needs a lot of money. So if you can donate to us, it will be great. Uh, if you don't have money, help us spread the word. Also, a great thing to do. So thank you very much for having me today, and uh, and and let me and and allow me to share my experience and story with the bears. Thank you. Thank you so much, Papa Bear from Malaysia, for explaining so well and giving us this wonderful trip in the forest. Though you are a busy person, Dr. Wong, but uh, you know, the students and educators, we have almost uh, 80 over students and educators joining in in, you, uh, in our Zoom session today and uh, almost 30 participants are watching live. And uh, definitely this uh, tour, uh, knowing in detail about 
the forest engineer sun bears are very important in order to conserve the nature and uh, to make sure that they are protected. So this is the only one uh, conservation center which is available around the globe. As you say, we are looking forward for educators, students and parents joining in today in order to adopt the sun bears. So Dr. Wong, you have given the link for them to view and uh, adopt the sun bears at the same time. In Suchana, shortly, uh, Dr. Kalyani will say something about it so that we can connect with you uh, in order to help out uh, for protecting more sun bears. Thank you so much, Dr. Wong, who is famously known as Papa Bear from Malaysia. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to go to the next agenda. Hang on a minute, Dr. Wong. Yeah, thank you. Welcome. So can I log off now? Uh, hang on, doctor. Another next few minutes. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, now I'm already in the part to inform about the announcements and webinar series before awarding certificates for Dr. Wong. Okay. So dear educators and students, well, we have done our first webinar on 2nd of October, it was about effective time management, presentation, communication skills. You can take a screenshot here so that you mark your calendar to join us on the, today's session is by Dr. Wong. Uh, next session will be on the 10th of October, which will be Monday, 7 p.m. IST. Fun with Puppet to know about climate action from the Philippines. 12 October, Wednesday, 7 p.m. IST, marine plastics problems and solutions from India. The speakers from India. 13th of October, Thursday, 7 p.m. IST, How to be a Global Climate Action MUN Speaker by a, a speaker from Uganda. 14 October, Friday, 7 p.m. IST, Road to MIEE 2022-2023 uh, by a speaker from Malaysia. 15th of October, Saturday, 5 p.m., Health, Food and Sustainable Environment. The speaker, the speaker is from Hong Kong. On 16th of October, October, Sundays, 5 p.m. IST, post-COVID-19, health issues and healthy food, which is really needed for all of us, speakers from Hong Kong. 17th of October, Monday, 6 p.m. IST, uh, 17th October, 18, 19 October, at 6 p.m. IST, uh, you will, uh, the educators can log in to join us to, in order to know about be a Google Doc specialist. The speaker is from India. And uh, on 20th of October, Thursday, 7 p.m., uh, meet researcher of biodegradable and herbal sanitary napkin. The speaker is from India. And we have a few more other sessions. We will update this. So at the moment, just stay tuned in the group. Okay, now, without further ado, I would like to welcome the project head, uh, Dr. Kalani Rao, uh, for the felicitation of certificates and word of thanks straight away, ma'am. Over to you, Dr. Kalyani. Uh, Ma'am, can you give me the sharing so that I can uh, share my screen here? Okay. I can so I stop sharing. Yeah. Thank you. Will you be able to see the screen? Um, yes, yes. We can. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Wong, <laughs> for this lively presentation. We are all excited since last few days. And uh, actually, I, I, we couldn't stop the questions poured out in the YouTube and even in the uh, Zoom chat. But still, we have to wind up the program. So a little a small token of gratitude from us, a certificate of recognition for you. And we'll be mailing the same to you uh, very soon uh, in recognition of your invaluable and exemplary delivery of motivational speech and organizing the virtual walk for the first time into the Bonan Sun Bears Conservation Center, Sabah in Malaysia. During this, this is the second webinar series. And this is all especially designed for a Suchana project participants to enhance their knowledge and awareness on uh, save our wildlife. And this, is, this session is based upon SDGs 13 and 15. This award has been awarded to you now uh, through the via Zoom, 8th October, 2022. And we are going to mail you very soon on this. Thank you so much. Please bear, bear with us. Few lines I would like to speak of to this. And this is for our great, inspirational, active, energetic moderator, certificate of appreciation for Mrs. Nirmala Kandasamy for uh, giving us all the support uh, for being a moderator and connecting with Born and Sun Bears Conservation Center with Malaysia. And also she has been an active participant and uh, back-end support for me anytime. 
And uh, with this, I would like to go move for this uh, vote of thanks. Just a few seconds. Okay, a lovely warm morning, sunny afternoon, and a delightful evening to our most valued and worthy honorable guest speakers, planet saviors, respected teachers, top management teams, and my beloved friends here. It's a matter of pride for me that I am proposing a word of thanks for this webinar series number two of Suchana, the Global UNSTG's Real Action Project 2022. I must remark a proficient sense of gratitude to our honorable speaker today, Dr. Wong from Malaysia, for, has, for his sharing with us some of his finest environmental practices. Dr. Wong, all the participants of this session are all inspired by your highly sparkling words. We, Suchana our global team, have been fortunate to have a renowned identity like you uh, from the wildlife conservation a dedicated researcher and a great motivator. It's a great honor to pour out my heartfelt gratitude towards Dr. Wong, the founder, of, founder and CEO of Born and Sun Bears Conservation Center, Sabah in Malaysia. What an awesome live experience today in your conservation center, Dr. Wong. And really we are thanking for you. We are very much grateful for Dr. Wong for accepting our request to provide this kind of pleasant and great live experience for our participants. A shower of appreciation for your extreme patience, interest, determination in raising this conservation center by protecting the wildlife and the little sun bears with your unconditional love and care, which is unmeasurable. We would like to uh, praise you and your entire crew for who are all involved in this, uh, seriously working with you since long years in maintaining this conservation center perfectly with a lot of care. It's a fabulous job for you all, by you all. Uh, blessings to all of you. And I take this occurrence to thank the entire core team of uh, Project Suchana, as well as the audience for representing the valuable views here in this chat box today. It has been a tribute to host all the audience attended today for this virtual live walk for the first time organized by Suchana team. We want to extend a generous thanks to all the mentors and students, especially who has attended in the early morning timings. And uh, thanks for their support and cooperation. I thank all the teachers and mentors for their leading supervision and inspiration at every point of time following this project steps. A special thanks for dear moderator who used to share her shoulder always for any good cause to make my ideas bigger and so that our vision comes true. Thank you so much, Mrs. Nirmala Devi, once again. And you okay. never said no for any task and never let us down with any, con with, and you are always given a support with your continuous uh, unconditional uh, help and all the coordination. It's a great privilege to work with you and you're a very trustworthy person, though we met since a long time and years ago. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thanks to all the people who helped me either directly and directly to make this virtual live walk successfully, especially to Mr. Vishnu, who is the technical head and you are supported. He is the behind, but without him, this is this project, this uh, project and the webinar series will not be happen successfully. I would like to thank Mr. Vishnu, who is always be behind me and supporting me. Anytime, even midnight, he will be giving me the responses and clearing all the doubts and the queries from our participants. And I would like to thank Ms. Winnie of Taiwan. She is coordinated for the YouTube. She's one of the core team members. And also other core team members who have done the support, uh, Dr. Daddy from Philippines, Ms. Laura from Romania, and also the, for, for their perfect uh, planning, support, and collaboration in any kind of uh, you know, requirement. So moreover, I would like to talk about my young warriors, the intern trainees, Erika, Jan, Jovin, and uh, Ashima. It's not possible, my dear, without, without all your involvement and a lot of appreciations for you and the willingness you have uh, whenever we have, whenever we require you, you will be there for us to finish the task on time. Thank you and blessings to all. A great applause to all the interns for your extreme, uh, extreme. Uh, I can say the best and best work for you from, from you all. I thank, uh, I request all the Suchana participants to bless us to do it more better and uh, complete this project successfully with the, your cooperation. Once again, thanking you all for being here and also Dr. Wong and all the code committee members and interns and all the participants. Thanks you. Thanks once again. Thank you all. Thank you so yeah. much, ma'am.
for the wonderful, inspiring message. Over to you, Dr. Wong. You have anything to say? And at yeah. the same time, selfie time, please turn on your cameras while Dr. Wong has something to say. Yeah, thank you so much. And right now, if you see my camera, I'm not sure whether you can see right in the middle, there's a bear sleeping on the tree. Just now I did not mention that they are by far the most arboreal bear species in the world. Uh, they sleep high on top of the trees, you know. Uh, so right in the middle of over here, actually, there's a bear. I cannot zoom in with my uh, <laughs> with my camera, but there's a bear on top of the tree. Okay, thank you so much for this opportunity. And I really uh, enjoy talking to all of you. And I really hope that one day all of you can come and visit us in Sabah uh, and see the bears with your own eye and smell the forest with your own nose and hear the song of the forest with your own ears. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Wong, again. And uh, hopefully, um, you know, I'm just staying five hours away from Dr. Wong's uh, Sun Bear Conservation Center. So hopefully during one of these holidays, I'll be able to meet Dr. Wong and the bears as well. As well. So thank you so much, Dr. Wong. And uh, we are going to continue with the giving information to our participants. Truly appreciate Dr. Wong. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, Dr. Wong. Okay, so dear uh, participants, um, uh, hang on, it's a selfie time. I've already taken some photos, so please turn on your cameras, everyone. Yes, uh, Erica, are you taking the first slide? <coughs> yes, ma'am. Okay, good. So we get a few minutes for Erika to take photos. We'll now go to the second slide, ma'am. All right. Keep smiling, everyone. To the third slide. And last is the fourth slide. All right, thank you so much. All right, thank you so much. And now um, our team will be posting the attendance link for those who have joined the session either on YouTube or in Zoom session, please kindly fill in. And the link will be deactivated in the next 10 minutes. So meaning to say, um, next 10 minutes, uh, we are going to deactivate the link. So please kindly fill in with correct email address, correct name, and uh, information needed, please fill in correctly. Then we do not want to hear that uh, you, you, know, you didn't get the emails, uh, the certificates and all that, because it might be you did not key in the correct email address. So it is auto-generated certificate. So you will get a beautiful recognition participation certificate from our team uh, direct on the spot. So please fill in correctly. And uh, we are going to give you 10 minutes to fill in. And our, kind, our request is, humble request is, please do not pass uh, this link to other people who did not join. And the YouTube video is available at any time. Please kindly pass the link to your students who are not here so that they will learn about sun bears and try your best, uh, try their best to adopt the sun bears. So I'd like to pass over to Kalyani, ma'am, if you have anything to say about the adoption of sun bears before we end the session. Yeah, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, yeah, this, uh, we, have, we are collecting the interested students, you know, you can, you can give a gift to yourself being uh, for your birthday, gift yourself a sun bear adoption. Okay. So instead of uh, going and celebrating in the uh, restaurants and having pizzas, burgers, wasting time and money, right? So we are doing sustainable development project. That means we are, we have to protect the environment. And I think Dr. Wong has explained you the benefits of, uh, you know, uh, conservation of uh, this sun bears. So why can't you do it? It's a small amount I observed in the website. It's a small amount in the uh, in the form. I've already mentioned those who are interested students can take one year adoption. That's enough because you're feeding a small 
voiceless creatures, right? So anywhere you're feeding your pets, like dogs, cats at your home. So similarly, you can adopt the sun bears, which is far away from you, but still you're doing a good thing for the environment. So think on this and let us know if you're interested, send us the details or I will send the details to them. You can directly uh, uh, meet and contact the conservation center. There is no mediation in between. There's uh, only directly you can pay the payment for one time for one year. That's enough. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am, for giving this opportunity to share this uh, idea. And uh, I just got the thought now. Thank you so much. Can you please uh, share the link, uh, Winnie, in the YouTube also, the certificate link, so the students will also uh, post their link. Please make sure to log in with your Gmail ID. Your uh, official ID, mentors, it's going to object sometimes. So try to create only once it's going to give you one attempt. So don't do mistakes while posting the, uh, filling the application form. Okay, thank you so much. If somebody is joined now, I think everything is ended up. Thank you, ma'am. All right, ma'am. Um, all right, ma'am. So I think, yes, that's it. So dear educators, students, if any parents joining in together with you, thank you so much. Do not forget to join uh, again uh, in our next upcoming webinar that is on 10th of October. So with uh, Puppeteer, so you are going to enjoy yourself, all right? You, a lot of learning is going to happen. So with that, goodbye. Thank you from Malaysia and also other countries. Thank you so much, students, educators, for joining us. So I'm going to stop the recording and you may leave the session. Thank you so much. Uh, you can play the video, Arika. Yes, play the video. I think, Winnie, you posted there in the YouTube, right? The yes, certificate yes, link. I did, link. I did. Thank you, thank you. Shrouded in a blanket of clouds, they awaken. Their canopies of green glitter in the sun. Their wildlife start to slither, chirp, and growl. And one of the planet's richest ecosystems comes to life. Green forests are the oldest living ecosystems on the planet. Some can trace their origins to over 70 million years ago back to a time when dinosaurs still roamed the earth. While the giant reptiles have disappeared, rainforests continue to thrive, growing on every continent except Antarctica. Two types of rainforests are scattered across the globe, temperate and tropical. Temperate rainforests are mainly found in the mid-latitudes, often near cooler, coastal, mountainous regions. Tropical rainforests are primarily located in warmer climates between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. As their names imply, temperate and tropical rainforests are the wettest forests on Earth, receiving up to about 33 feet of rain per year. This precipitation plays a critical role in creating an exceptionally lush and biologically diverse habitat. While rainforests only make up about 6% of the Earth's surface area, they are home to over half of the world's plant and animal species. This biodiversity creates benefits that extend far beyond the rainforest boundaries. Rainforest plants produce an assortment of food items, in addition to ingredients useful in everyday products and medicines. In fact, an estimated 70% of the plants used in cancer treatments are only found in rainforests. On an even larger scale, rainforests help to stabilize the planet's climate. Its lush green vegetation regulate global temperatures by absorbing massive amounts of radiation from the sun. They also absorb vast amounts of carbon dioxide and convert them into oxygen about 40% of the planet's breathable air. Over the past few centuries, rainforests have disappeared at an alarming rate. Factors such as economic inequalities, human development, 
and demand for natural resources have fueled the deforestation of these rich ecosystems. At the current rate, rainforests, which have survived for over 70 million years, may completely disappear within the next century. But through educational campaigns, sustainable logging practices, and cooperation with local communities, deforestation may begin to slow down, helping preserve rainforests for many generations to come. I am the living. I am the animal that runs next to you from your first step on this planet. I am part of a complex and sublime ecosystem. I belong to the earth, the forests, the oceans and the sky. I am beautiful and mysterious. I am both the predator and the prey. Often in motion, nature is home to me. I like my loneliness and I like being surrounded by my tribe. I am so many things at the same time. I am a bird singing and dancing with the clouds. I'm a leopard, faster than the wind. I am a lion with a crown respected by all. I am an elephant, a proud member of a herd. I am a tiger, alone, strong, smart, and beautiful. I am a gorilla whose behavior is a mystery to you. I am a whale bigger than your imagination. I am a polar bear. My coat makes me invisible in the white desert. I am all species at the same time. I see, I listen, and I breathe. However, every day I disappear in silence. For your children, I become a memory. I am a voice you're not listening to, and very soon, I'll only be a legend. I am the living. I request everyone to leave the floor.